Hello and welcome to Limitless Life. I am your host, Larry Hutton, and we get to take the limits off our lives every time we get together and spend time with Jesus, spend time with the Word of God, spend time with our Creator, spend time with the one who knows more than we know and knows how to get us to where we need to go and knows how to give us everything in life that we need, knows how to prosper us, knows how to make us have a fun life, a happy life, a fulfilled life. We're talking about a good God. Oh man, I was singing a song before I came on the air, just a song that I'd heard way back in the 70s. Uh, oh Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. For oh Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. For oh Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Oh Lord, you are good and forever your mercy endures. We ought to be happy that His mercy endures forever because <laughs> if it wasn't for the mercies, remember the Bible says, if it wasn't for the mercies of God, we'd all be consumed. <laughs> yeah, by, the, by God, He's a consuming fire. Thank God for His mercy that endures forever. Thank God, goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our life. Remember the 23rd Psalm? God is a good God and He's good all the time. So let's get back into our our um, series that we've been doing all these months now. This is a, we're in our 41st week of this series. This today is my 204th lesson. The cool thing about this series is it's not the same subject. It's many different subjects, but I have broken this series down into three parts, part A, part B, and part C. Part A, part B, part C, because I call it the ABCs of true Christianity. If you learn the ABCs, you'll know all the way through the alphabet to the XYZs. But part A is what God has made you, part B is what God has given you, and part C is what God has called you to do or has enabled you to do. The first six weeks we covered part A, 23 things that God has made you. The next 26 weeks we covered part B, 23 things that God has given you. And then the last eight and a half weeks we've been teaching part C of our series, and that is what God has enabled you to do. And it answers a lot of questions about people's callings and why are you here on earth and why does God have you here and what is your purpose in life and all that. Uh, our foundation text has been 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as Jesus is, so are we in this world right now. And we've taken that last part of the state, that verse, as he is, so are we in this world, and, and really zeroed in on that. We found out 1 John 2, 6 says you can walk even as Jesus walked. You, as a child of God, can walk the same way Jesus walked. And he walked in triumph. He walked in victory. He walked as an overcomer. He walked as a healer. He walked as a miracle worker. He walked. You can walk even as he walked. And let me reiterate real quick, because the Lord told me to do this twice a, twice a week who you are, what you have, and then we'll get back into what you can do. Who you are. You are a spirit, an eternal being. You've been created in God's image and God's likeness. He created you in His class of being, a God class right beneath Him, so you'd have dominion and authority over every other being. <clears throat> Number two, God has made you his very own son and his very own daughter. You're part of the immediate family of God. Number three, God has also made you a servant. You're a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Excuse me. <clears throat> Number four, God has made you his friend and you are a very dear and a very close friend. Number five, God has made you an heir of his. You are an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus. Number six, God has made you righteous with his righteousness. Number seven, God has made you a chosen one. He's handpicked you, hand selected you. He says you're the best of your kind and the best in your class. Number eight, God has made you his representative. You're an ambassador of his government. Number nine, God has made you an anointed one just like he did Jesus. Number 10, God made you a love being. Number 11, God made you the redeemed. Number 12, God made you royalty. Number 13, God made you holy. Number 14, God has made you his purchased and protected possession. Number 15, God has made you his temple. God, number 16, God has made you the light of the world. Number 17, God has made you the salt of the earth. Number 18, God's made you an overcomer. Number 19, God's made you more than a conqueror. Number 20, God has made you well and whole in your physical body. Number 21, God has made you financially independent of the world system. Number 22, God has made you a soldier in his army. And number 23, God has made you complete in him. 
So that's 23 things that God has made you. Every one of them will not happen. They won't be evident in your life if you don't learn to receive the grace that has made you that. Just like you received grace that made you eternal so that you're going to heaven when you die, made you have eternal life and so that when you take your last breath on this planet earth, man, you're going to be in the presence of Jesus. So God has made you complete in him was the 23rd thing. But every one of these things you have to partake of by grace through faith. So that's part A. Part B of our series is what God has given you. He's given you himself, given you Jesus. Number two, he's given you the same anointing he gave Jesus. Number three, he's given you his Zoe, his very life. Number four, he's given you a team, a permanent position on the team and even put himself on your team. Number five, God has given you his love. Number six, God has given you the Holy Spirit. Number seven, God has given you his weapons and his armor. Number eight, one of my favorites, he's already given you everything you need to live a fun, happy, fulfilled life. Number nine, God has given you all of heaven's authority and all the power of heaven to back it up. Number 10, God has given you nine attributes of his character called fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, um, I mean, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. Nine things that God's given you. Love, joy, peace, uh, patience, kindness, uh, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. Number 11, God has given you the name. Number 12, God has given you the word. Number 13, God's given you the blood. Number 14, God's given you full access to his throne anytime, anywhere for anything. Number 15, God has given you total freedom and liberty for your life. Number 16, God has given you angels that are assigned to you for your entire life from the time you're born till the time you die. Number 17, God's given you a pathway to brighter tomorrows and a wonderful future. Number 18, God's already given you citizenship in heaven. Your name's already there before you get there. Number 19, God has given you his righteousness. Number 20, God has given you his health for your physical body. Number 21, God has given you his financial blessings blessings and the ability to acquire them. Number 22, God has given you men and women ministers like myself to equip you so that you can be all that God's called you to be and have all that God called you to have and do all that God's called you to do. And then number 23, God has given you a purpose for living. That was good. We spent several days on that one. By the way, Remember, we've gone to a lot of scriptures to establish each one of these points on our list. If you weren't with us, go back. If there's one that you heard that you thought, man, I wish that was true in my life, go back and find out it is true and learn how to release your faith in God's grace so that you see it evident in your life. And then part C is what we're, in, we're doing right now of our, of our series. Let's continue part C. Number one, you can live free from sin. Number two, you can keep your life from falling apart. Number three, you can love everyone all the time. And number four, you can overcome everything in life that tries to overcome you. This is the one we've been spending a lot of time on, and it's because I see people overcome by so many different ways and so many different areas in their lives. People are overcome with bad temper and anger. People are overcome with depression. People are overcome with stress and worry. People are overcome with financial woes. People are overcome with sickness and disease. So many different ways and areas of life that people are overcome. But you can overcome everything in life that tries to overcome you. So our text that we're using for this particular point is 1 John 5, 4. Whoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. If you've accepted Jesus, you are born of God. And he says you're a world overcomer. And then because you're a world overcomer, you have to use your faith to get the victory. Implying that if you don't use your faith, you're going to get the failure. What's the opposite of victory? Failure, right? Well, this is the victory that overcomes. So the things in the world are trying to bring failure to you, but you do not have to be, you don't have to succumb to failure. You don't have to be a failure. You can be a Victorious. You can be a victorious one by using your faith in God's grace. We found out, again, this faith here is talking about in what he's made you and what he's given you, which is why we spent so many, uh, all those weeks, you know, uh, covering who you are and what you have in Christ. Now let's turn back to Philippians 4, where I finished last program in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do. Remember I finished talking about those three words, I can do. You need to just make them a part of your repertoire. Get the I can't out. 
unless you want to say, I can't sin because I'm not going to, so I can't. <laughs> I, can't be, I can't be overcome because I'm an overcomer. I can't succumb. I can't walk into failure because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a winner going someplace to happen. <laughs> if you want to say, I can't, then, then I can't be overcome by Satan, bless God, because he's defeated and underneath my feet. But I can do all things. So, so the things that you're trying to do, all right, the things you're trying to do to overcome the things that are pointing to failure in your life, you can do, you can overcome them because God says you can, but it's through Christ, I'm talking about Jesus, the anointed one, through Jesus who strengthens you. How does he strengthen you? You get in him. When you get in him, all of a sudden his strength is infused into you. And also he's in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So his being in you infuses you with inner strength. That's why I read the Amplified Bible. Let me read that again to you real quick. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. We know 2 Corinthians 3, 5 says we're not sufficient as of to think anything of ourselves. And that's not what it means here when the Amplified says I'm sufficient, I'm self-sufficient because he said in Christ's sufficiency. So in other words, I can do. I am sufficient because of Christ in me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Good News Bible says, I have the strength to face all conditions, all conditions, financial conditions, physical conditions, emotional feelings, you know, your feelings, conditions, marital conditions, no matter what it is, social, whatever it is, I have the strength to face all conditions by the power that Christ gives me. And then the message says, whatever I have, Wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Boy, that's so good because that's talking about who you are, what you have, and what you can do all in one verse. Whatever I have, wherever I am, in other words, whatever I'm going through, it doesn't matter. I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. So why can I overcome? Because of what he's made me an overcomer right? So these first three words, I can do. Actually, if you look up these three words, it's not three different Greek words that were translated these words. This is just one word in the Greek. Listen to the definition of this one word that's been translated, I can do. It means to have or exercise force, to prevail, to be strong in body, that's your physical body, to be robust, to be in sound health. So that's talking about your physical. Of course, it can talk about your mental health too. And then to have strength to overcome. Listen to those six definitions. This is what you can do. I can do. Here's what it literally means in the Greek. To have or exercise force. To prevail. To be strong in body. To be robust to be in sound health, to have strength to overcome. Let me put each one of those definitions into a sentence specifically for you. All right, I want to speak it just to you. All right, listen, I'm talking to you now and I'm talking to what Paul or what God said through the Apostle Paul right here in this verse. I'm going to use these six definitions of I can do. You can exercise force over your hardships. You can prevail over your hardships. You can be strong in your body over hardships. You know, sometimes you're going through things and you feel physically weak, right? They try and make you physically weak. And what do you say? You stand up and declare, I can be strong in my body over these hardships. You can be robust over your hardships. You can be in sound health 
over your hardships. Hardships then in that case would be physical attacks, right? Sickness, disease, injury, things like that. Pain in different parts of your body. You can be in sound health. This says it right here in the Greek, over your hardships. Let's use this last one. You have the strength to overcome your hardships. And that means everything that tries to overcome you in any, and, and in any area of your life. You have the strength to overcome your hardships. That means everything that tries to overcome you in any area of your life. Isn't that good news? Phew, wow. Now let's, let's go over to the 23rd Psalm. 23rd Psalm, I want you to see, we're talking about you can overcome everything in life that tries to overcome you. And I want you to see what the 23rd Psalm says here. It's so good. And I know people hear this all the time, but let's just look at it close. I think it'll, I think it'll really bless you. Uh, the 23rd Psalm, we're just going to look at one, one verse right this moment. Yes, verse 4, yes, though I walk, instead of saying yea, like the King James says, yes, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you, Lord, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So the first thing I want to point out here in this verse is the valley of the shadow of death. It's talking about the kingdom of darkness. It's all it means, the valley of the shadow of death. The word valley here... Um, actually in the Hebrew, if you look it up, it means a steep gorge uh, with lofty sides and it means uh, narrow valley. So that's what this word valley here in the Hebrew means. So it's using this term valley as an analogy. The five words uh, of the shadow of death is only one Hebrew word. So though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death is just one Hebrew word. It means, it means the shade of death or the grave is what it means. It actually comes from two root words. One means shadow or shade. The other means uh, death, uh, deadly, ruin, pestilence, basically all the things that lead to death. So, when you, when you look at these two words and then the word that's translated the valley of the shadow of death, it means it's a reference to darkness. It's a reference to evil or a reference to ungodliness that's all around us. That's all around us all the time casting its shadow. As long as we are in this world, the kingdom of darkness is in operation with all of its sickness, all of its depression, and everything that steals, kills, and destroys. And you and I are walking right in the middle of all of it. That's what this verse is saying, all right? Furthermore, this verse has been so abused and so misused. So let me say this. This verse is in no way saying that you have to walk into the valleys of life and be defeated and knocked all around and kicked from pillar to post. That is not what David is saying at all, and yet people have used this verse in that way. When people are being run over, beat down, overcome, and totally defeated, Christians want to use this verse, or at least part of this verse, and say... Well, brother, or well, sister, God never promised life would be easy. Hmm, I thought he said my yoke was easy. Oh, never mind. Ah, oh, come on, God never promised life would be easy. You know, he's just taking you through the valley of the shadow of death. But hang on, brother, because someday it'll all be over. No, 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 that is not what David is saying at all. In fact, if you read the whole context here, starting in verse 1, <laughs> and you read all six verses, God is your shepherd. He gives you everything you need. He gives you rest. He strengthens you. He keeps you on the right path. He keeps you free from fear. He's always with you. He protects you. And verse 6 or, or he feeds you a seven-course meal when you're facing your enemies, 
He continually, it's the last verse, six verse, He continually envelops you with His goodness, His love, and His mercy for the rest of your life. Therefore, if you interpret this fourth verse in context, David is not saying with some sad voice, you have to go through the valley. <laughs> no, in fact, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Notice the three words before that phrase, the valley of the shadow of death. Notice the three words, I walk through. Not I stumble through, not I limp through, not I faint in, <laughs> not I get beat up in, not I struggle through, not I get defeated in. He said, I walk through this darkness that's casting its shadow. The word walk means to walk. If you look up the Hebrew word, it just means to walk or proceed. So I'm walking through or proceeding through the valley of the shadow of death. There is no indication of weariness here. There's no indication of weakness or frailty. There's no indication of me succumbing to the, what's this shadow that's being cast on me. There's no indication of defeat here. Listen, we're, I'm, not I'm not denying the things around us. Yes, there is darkness. Yes, there is uncertainty. Yes, there is confusion. But listen, 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 says that we are the children of light. We are the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Matthew 5, 14 says, you are the light of the world. And then verse 16 says, let your light shine. So your light, which is Jesus in you, will dispel the darkness that you're walking through when you release faith in what Jesus has done for you. Wow. What you're going through may seem gloomy and it may seem dark, but remember it's a shadow, <laughs> a shadow of death. A shadow has never hurt anyone. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I have some boxing gloves on and I'm shadow boxing. You know, they call it shadow boxing, right? In other words, you're not really hitting anybody. But now let's say there's a bright light on one side of me shining and you're over on the other side of me and my shadow is shining on you. And so every time I do this, the, it looks like if somebody looks like a shadow, it looks like you're getting beat to a pulp. And yet you're not moving. You're not flinching. You're not falling over. You're not backing down. You're not going, ouch, ooh, ah, oh, quit doing that, Larry. <laughs> you're, not, you're not doing any of that. Wow. Because it's just a shadow. Therefore, we don't have to be worried or in fear about our surroundings or the circumstances we are facing. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Let me, let me just, I wrote some things down so I could just make that simpler. I will fear no adversity. I will fear no affliction. I will fear nothing bad. I will fear no calamity. I will fear no misery. I will fear no stress or distress. I will fear no harm. I will fear no grief or misery. I will fear no sorrow. I will fear no trouble. Wow. I will not fear any of those things. You know what that means? You're walking through. You're not getting defeated in. You're not succumbing to. You're walking through. What, what's the opposite of fear? I will not fear. What's the opposite of fear? Faith. So that tells me then if, we're, if I will not fear through the valley of the shadow of death, then I'm doing what 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says. I walk by faith and not by sight. It goes on. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. No fear, because you understand He is with you. 
no fear. That means our eyes are on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, according to Hebrews, right? And that keeps us free from fear. It says, you are with me. Man, I'm going to pick up here next program because this is so good. I, I, want to, I, want to, I want to talk about his rod and staff because a lot of people haven't understood that and, and just finish this verse out. But uh, no fear. I don't have to fear because Jesus is with me. If you just believe that statement, you know what? When you enter a test or a trial, oh, man, I, oh, Jesus, you're right here with me. Oh, man, I got this made. I don't have to worry about a thing. I don't have to stress out. I don't have to get in fear. Ha, huh, got Jesus right here with me. What a difference that makes in your life. All right, well, we're out of time. We'll pick it back up here next program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our partner program, our Power Partner program, all those that are helping us financially. You're helping us reach so many people that are watching right now that haven't had an opportunity to become a partner yet. They'll join up too when they find out how good this is. We love you. We call you blessed. And until next program, have a wonderful Jesus-filled day. Bye-bye. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. With your own words, you can release the power of life that will bring health to your body. God's healing grace is released through faith, and faith is released through what you say. Your healing is in your mouth. God wants you to be whole, well, and healthy. But if you have not heard his word on it, how can you have faith to call on him as your healer? These 52 Declare It cards have a healing scripture from God's word on one side and a corresponding declaration of faith, which you can speak about yourself on the other. Hearing God's word concerning your healing will build your faith to walk through life in complete confidence that every sickness or disease that ever attacks you must depart. To order your prescription for health declare it cards, go to larryhutton.org or call us at 888-887-WORD. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, Go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others you'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org or you can call 888-887-WORD.